Hello. Well, here they are on turn two. Um, French turn of black powder. I'm going to try and go back to videotaping because taking all these notes and writing everything down is turning me into a bookkeeper and a bureaucrat. And that's not how I play the game. So that's no fun, although it is fun to share the results. So we'll start off with turn two. And the French have already lost one brigade, an entire brigade last under the British turn because they managed to charge and knock out two French regiments of the French, French regiments of Beauchamp, uh, no, not Beauchamp, yeah, I think it was, of Beauchamp's brigade, I think that was him, and now we're going to try and turn this around. First of all, we've got our orders to get, so we're starting with the French command phase. So first phase, we'll start with the French here, and we've got the Arcos, we've got the Arcos Cavalry, we've got Wolfram's Force Cavalry, and Weichel's Cavalry, all in his group. And he needs to roll to get them going down and going up, to get them going. Well, first his order is Darko. I want your men to go fall back. You're too wounded to fight on. So let's get you back and you're shaking. So let's get you behind the line there of your two other regiments where I can rally you. But in the meantime, well actually, that's probably not too smart move too because he can, he can stay there and get rallied by the general. And let's see here, he can do that, rally the general that up and have these other guys do it. So he's going to try and get his men going forward. They are within six, uh, in, six inches of a foe. So that being the case, they're gonna have a minus one under a runner. So their staff rating is eight, minus one, seven, roll a six, they get one move. So, oh, I'm sorry, to Arco, I mean Wolframstorff, Advance forward and same with Weichel. We want you to advance. So, Arthur, advance forward, take the lead. So, interpenetration is allowed in this period of time, but it costs you half of movement. So, they get four and a half. We did go forward, but we're not, but we didn't order a charge. So, we're right there in front. Of we're facing Ginkle's regiment, but now, hmm. Okay, Weichel, I want you to advance and then turn to t advance and turn to take the Ginkle regiment on the on its flank. So let's see if we can do that. Come on, Weichel. Five, five from seven, that's two, they get two moves. And they don't have to interpenetrate anyone. So moving, cavalry moves nine in this game. So nine. And their first move, oh, they're gonna be able to do it. And then two on the set, it's gonna be on the flank. Beautiful. And you even have Darko to Sport. Last order. Last order will be, oh, and it's General Von Schnitz. Von Schnitz is going to try and rally. Rally on me, boys, in the Darko Regiment. So let's see here. Six and 11. He rolled an 11 to his dead eight. No one's rallied, nothing happens. So, but they are within range of an enemy. Um, shaken units, I don't believe it. Uh, do they have to make a, a disorder move? I gotta check that. 
No, they're not required to retreat, but just the same, uh, since they failed the rally test, they can't do anything else. So they're stuck there. So that ends everything for the 5th Brigade. Next, we're going to move on, and we're going to go to this brigade here that has fought against Oh, they're ferocious chargers, and I hate ferocious chargers because they get that, they get to reroll every miss they make. So that is really bad um, in terms of that. So that means you're able to move forward and go, do I want to attack them? Oh, they, are they the ones that lost their officer? Ah, yes, they did. So this unit, 29. <coughs> That's Baum and Maestro de Camp, but they lost the Green Army Regiment in combat last turn, but their regiment still held. So that means we're going to put their leader back Put them back with this unit right here, connect them there, but we have to roll. I have a house rule for leader's replacement. And after a leader is killed, he gets a replacement in the following command phase. So we all, he rolled an 11. He actually comes back as an 8, so he stays back. So I might as well keep, say it's still Rion then, who's, I mean, it must still be Beauchamp then that stays, that's General Beauchamp, who stays on and keeps fighting. So, he must have fell off his horse and looked like he was trampled or something and incapacitated for a moment when the fighting with his Grion regiment took on. So now here he is with one of his other regiments. I think they're the Maestro de Camp. And here we go, 28 and 28. 28 is the Maestro de Camp. Yep, and Baum is right there. So here we go. Oh, I didn't give them orders. Hey, six orders. Okay, ball master to camp, advance and charge your enemy. They'll probably counter charge. It's a five. So five from an eight. I shouldn't have rolled that. I know that's against the rules. Probably there's a penalty for that, but hey, I'm playing by myself, so I can get away with that. So eight take away five is three. So that means they're going to get three moves which advances them, but the Dowager can countercharge since there are th about three, no, about two inches between them. They each move an inch together, and there they'll match. Likewise, the Balm Regiment, I'm ordering you to go forward also and charge the second Plymouth, which is in front of you, for the first Plymouth. It's going to be ten. 10 over 8, nope, they do not follow that order. They stay put. So, now that that is done, okay, next we have, next we have Gink, um, who are they? They are Broth's regiment, and those guys, and they're actually hesitant. That's why I've got you know, this guy, that's why I have Delegra, their commander-in-chief with them. You know, because, you know, just in case you have to kick this guy's butt to do something. I want his regiment to go smack it into. So, Broth orders his first regiment. Broth orders 34. That's your name. 34. Let me see something. 37? No. 34 and 37. Yeah. And why did I number these 34? Oh, they're 36. Duh. Okay. Oh, I see. 
36. Uh, I hate it when I misnumber things. If you're numbered correctly, I'm a soldier, but not on the paper. That's why I'm having confusion. So that must be the Santini. And another one, 35, must be the Mona And 34 must be the Guard, car guard Carpet A. Okay. So 34 to Guard Carbon A. I want you to charge into the Dutch there. Believe that it won't present. 10! Darn it, fail! And since you failed, I don't think you can order anyone else to go after that either. Let me double check. Yep. Unfortunately, the Broth Brigade is still sitting pretty in place. Ah. Oh, okay. wait. But General Delegra is with him, and he's going to reroll that die. A seven. Okay. Seven from his eight. That gives them one move. So that means they'll be able to go for, move forward and charge. They're definitely within 12, so boom. There'll be one battle, but he's not going in with any support. But if you look there, they're shaking and weak, so I think that hopefully Bross Brigade can do something to him. Now, since it's the second turn, the, red, the infantry can now enter this game. So we're going to start actually here at my lower end. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to start at the far east end of the board. And I'll reposition the camera. For okay, here we are at the east end of the board in the farthest view possible. We are going to start with the 4th Brigade, 4th Infantry Brigade, that's General Belleil, and they have a staff rating of 8. He's just going to order the whole brigade to start marching down the road, followed by the artillery. And they're going to go in line and line. Oh, this one don't count because it's off the map. So they got a three, that's five. So three from eight, that's five. Definitely gonna get three get uh, three moves. So let's head down the road. Infantry and march count. Okay. They get six. So that's about three times six. And that's three times six, 18. We're able to get 18 moves. Go with the first regiment here, 12, and then six more. And then six more. There they are. We got the first regiment, the first of the Rebellion Brigade coming through. Quite a fast little guy there. So there I'm in the field. General, he's definitely going to move up to move up to the middle regiment and attach himself there for a little bit. <coughs> and there's Belial on the road. So after Belial, it's going to come. I think we're going to put the third brigade behind him, and the third brigade is General Brielle. In the same order, marching all the 
The entire brigade followed with the cannons behind. One roll should do it. It's a brigade order. So here we go. Six from eight. That's a two. Two moves, but one will suffice because they're not going the full 18. Just getting on here right behind the other regiment. There's its second battalion. able to get there and their guns will just come on. I think guns will move 12. So I don't put them. They'll just get up to the oh but I did say behind so artillery is coming. They're on the board in limber formation. Now the guns I use two model guns to represent a regiment with me, I mean a battery with me, and when they're deployed, they're side by side, but before they're deployed, they are in, before they are deployed, they are in these little, um, these are, we're going to attach General Brielle to its 2nd Brigade there. We just bring them on the back right there because I did order them to stay coming following the brigade, so that's there. So they are there, and let's see here. Um, so we got two brigades on the road now heading into the battlefield. However, the green dots, if you're looking at them, those are. First fire markers, those green pet, pet, um, beads, those serve as first fire markers. And what else was I going to say there? Oh, about the artillery, when they're deployed, they're side by side, it counts as, one, it counts as a single battery, and they are no longer allowed to limber once they have unlimbered. They have to only be manhandled after that. So now we're going to come back down to the eastern end of the battlefield, I mean to the western end of the battlefield, and get the other infantry up there. So now we got the second brigade under General Mercy, and in columns, they're going to come in a straight column. I'm going to give a brigade order. Advance the uh, columns forward, one behind the other, with the artillery to the rear. And you'll advance as far as you can go, past the hedges, and past the cavalry back. It's a 10. They have not been able to cut it. Now in the rules it says they come in, if they fail their order, their march column just comes in and they just sit here at the bottom of the map, right here, off right on the map, but they just come on in march columns. on to Air Limbered. The general's right here attached to that first regiment. And that takes care of the second regiment. Next we're going to order the first regiment, Trekasons Trekasons Regiment. They're going to, what do you guys, it come in and advance forward in your march columns as fast as you can. All three brigade order, all three um, brigades advance and with the artillery following to the rear. 
It's a six from an eight, two, he gets two moves. So that infantry is going to get to advance 12. Oh, that's right, even on a... Okay. So 12. Let's see here. The table edge. And here they are. Come on. Messing up the pile. Guns. Guns are here. General Truckerson, he he's accompanying the first brigade. <coughs> Brave chap that he is. Okay. And there they are. Along, entering along the road. That's the first. So all brigades have taken their turns. So that's it. Orders have been done. Next, we move on to shooting. There's no guns to be shot at right now. So then we move on to hand to hand. And this is where it's going to get interesting. We'll start our first hand to hand battle. And I'll start that right here. All right. Anyways, first battle is going to take place right there. You can see my hand pointing there, right there. It's going to be Ross Brigade. They are. The guard carbineers get seven dice. Okay. No commander is with them. The French also, I mean, the British also get seven dice. But they have a leader with them, which is going to give them an additional dice. He's an eight plus leader, so he gets in that plus one bonus. Um, so there. So that's that there. So, here we go. There's no closing fire. Those guys could not counter charge because they are there. So, combat hit modifiers. We're charging. So, that means instead of rolling a four to hit, we only have to roll a three. And, per secure phone. No. The British, however, are, are shaken, which means they have to roll a 5 to hit. So 4 to hit to 5 to hit. Skirmish engaged in the flank or rear, not yet in a small unit. So we get to roll 7 dice at a 3, at a three or higher. Here we go. We got a six, three fives, two twos, and a one, which is a miss. So that's going to turn into six hits. We'll put those six hits over here so we can see them. Next comes the British, and they've got they've got a rule. A five or higher to hit. Okay. Five. Five. 
So they got two hits. However, they are, no, they're Dutch. So Dutch are tough fighters. They can reroll one miss. And they rolled another mint, and they got one. So, three hits to six hits. Okay. So being that, now we're rolling saves. So out of the saves, we take these hits. Any save morale modifiers going to them? Target? Nope. There are no save. There are no save modifiers. So the front. Oh. Six or I'm rolling. Dave, those were all hits. hits. There's three here, so we are rolling. Um, we'll take the British dice and do it since that we're rolling three saves. Three saves. So we only suffer. One casualty. I'll change it to a blue dice because it's. Oh, no. Nah. One casualty on the French. And the Dutch. They have to roll four or higher two. They didn't do so bad. So, one. So the Dutch suffer three hits, and the French suffer four. I mean, suffer th the Dutch suffer three hits, and the French suffer one. Got to turn it around. So French suffer one. Put that there by them, and then the Orange Fusen suffers three. On top of its already high stack of casualties. Not good. So let's determine who wins this thing. Okay. Okay, like I say, the British, the French suffered one casualty. The French suffered, I mean, the Dutch suffered three. Okay. Supports. Okay. These guys are here. They didn't make it all the way. Bon, the master de camp. The maestro de camp. Are they within three inches? See, I have to cut it in half because I'm using smaller units. No, they are not within three inches. They cannot give support. So there are no supports on either side. So being that there are no supports on either side, it turns into if there's supports, my ground per flank, square hook. So nope. So here's what happened. The British did, I mean the French did three, and the Dutch won. The French win the battle. They won the count. So now there is a break test for the Dutch. And so, break test, here it goes on. And here we go, break test. So they lost a bit, they test of defeating hand-to-hand -hand combat, they were. So, their dice is going to be minus for each excess cavalry casualty. They got one, two, three is what they have in the shaken. How many are they going to be down? They're down three, so it's minus three on the dice. Not disordered. Not, okay. So it is a four minus three. They are a one. This unit on the bracket table will be destroyed. The British have lost the orange prison. Now, OK. 
okay. And the cas and the leader of the Orange Prison is a British casualty. I put him on board on the British side. That's when we know where they are. So the Dutch have lost one of their brigades. The Ginkgo's still around, the Wurtenberg's still around, but not the Dutch. So the British have lost two brigades, I mean two regiments. Let's see how the others hold out. Okay, next one. So, what do the victors decide to do? Well, I'm a victor, and what I'm going to do, um, I don't want to advance anymore, not far from my uh, original regiment, original brigade, so we're going to back up. We're going to just back up right, we're going to fall back one move, which is plenty easy to do, and we're here now in line with our own troops and there we go so we've won the battle and after the battle we go into the next battle here and it's going to be an awful other one up here in this corner we've got the ginkgo regiment it's being flanked by Weichel Regiment and Wurtemberg is facing them. But they're actually giving flank support to the Weichel Regiment. So that's going to help them out a lot. So here we go. Here's the battle. Now, Weichel are Karaziates, so they don't get three dice. No, they get nine. They're gonna get nine dice to roll. So let's take a British dice for this one. A nine dice to roll. And hand to hand. They're charging. So they get a plus one. Michael can't carve or charge. Oh Hold on here. I think I just made a mistake here, and that is that they could process, I'm thinking a cavalry move when they're charged, one of their options is they can turn to face. Let, stand by and let me look that up. And turn to face is indeed what Ginkle can do. So, that's what they do. Alrighty. So, French get nine dice. There's no leader with them though. Yep, nine dice. Okay, and let me see. They get nine, they're as large as charging. They, get a, they do get a charging bonus per function. Shaken or disordered. So that means they are. Gotta move these guys back a little bit to show that they're not in contact. But they are supporting them. So they get plus one on their die roll, which will make them be able to hit a three. Uh, they are so still a normal four. So, French roll first. Roll first. And you need to get a three or higher. Indeed. We'll change, since it's blue, we'll change this five to a five and this three to a three here. That way I can just reflect the miss and get rid of that red dice. Five, five, oh, three. Correction, I'll change this two to a three because they hit on a three. There. So one, two, three, four. Again, six hits have been made on. Six hits have been made on the Ginkle. 
regiment. And now they get seven, but they don't get any bonuses. They only get a four. So they get a four higher to hit. Let's see what they do. And theirs was a great roll. Two, six. They knew their life was at stake. They matched the British. They matched the, the French. They also got four. Well, in that case, the French can keep the dice. They'll roll for their saves. Okay. I don't think there's any, response, any morale things on that there. Target, target, phone, what's March film? No modifiers to the save roll, so they gotta get four higher to save. One, two, three. So three casualties have been taken. Dutch got to do the same thing. Man. And it's the exact same results for each arm. Both sides suffer three casualties. So, being that's the case, all right, three and three. Heavy cavalry on turn of charge, counter charge. Okay, oh, there is a support to the rear. So that's, I mean, to the flank, and that is the Wurttemberg Regiment. Oh, so that's one for the Blues, for the French, but I think also the French have support too. Do they count? They're facing? No, they're facing away. Hmm. Let me see something here. Can they support in this room? Because I just did that with the with the with the Wurttemberg Regiment. Let's see how it works for the British because they might be able to get one unit to support. Okay, it's a draw. Both units were shaken in the battle, in the combat, because they each took three casualties. So now they each have to make a break test. Um, there's no excess kit for either one, neither's disordered, none suffered, and none lost their colors yet. Um, they're not steady. So let's see here. Let's roll for the French first. It's a six. Six, it holds its ground, it stays where it is and does not move. So the French hold their ground. Let's see the ginkle. That don't count. They roll an eight. Eight, they also hold their ground and stay where they're at. So, draw looks like since no one's fled, we're going to go into another round next turn. Oh, joy that will be. So, and perhaps the other units can join them. So, here we go here. Uh, so, okay. It's a draw. Both units were shaken in the battle, in the combat, because they each took three casualties. So now they each have to make a break test. Um, there's no excess kit for either one. Neither's disordered. None suffered, and none lost their colors yet. Um, they're not steady. So let's see here. Let's roll for the French first. It's a six. Six, it holds its ground, it stays where it is and does not move. So the French hold their ground. Let's see the ginkle. That don't count. They roll an eight. Eight, they also hold their ground and stay where they're at. So, draw looks like, since no one's fled, we're going to go into another round next turn. Oh joy that will be. 
So, and perhaps the other units can join them. So here we go here. Um, so, so that's quite interesting. That's going to cut that there. So where else do we have combat? We have another combat right down here at this end of the field. We've got the Plymouth versus 28, which I believe is, the, oh, that's the Maestro de Camp versus 68, the Dowager's Regiment. That is the Queen Dowager's Regiment. I recognize that flag. So, let's see here. Both units get a, both units, um, both units are able to take a, both units are able to get there. Okay, supports. Both units have support. The, the Maestro has it from Baum and Dowager from the Plymouth. So that's here. Okay. So let's see here. French have seven dice, but they all have a leader attached to them, so they get eight dice when they take their attack. So good for them. They have eight dice when they make their attack. Okay. They're going to charge a large unit charging. They are both charging and counter charging. So they both have plus one to their dice. They're both going to hit on three or less. I mean, three or more. Um, one less round. Procure secure flank. Shaken or distorted skirmishing. Nope. So each side. The Dutch, I mean, the British only get seven though because. They are, they only get seven because they don't have that leader attached to him. He's attached to the Plymouth. See, he's right there, not the other regiment. Whereas the Maestro can't brought the general with him. So, here we go, three or higher. The French did four hits, all rolls of four. On two British, the British three or higher. One, two, three, four, five. Oh man, it's a slaughter. The British did six, and since they are ferocious, they get to reroll that miss. And it's a hit. See, I hate that's what I hate about ferociousness. Man, those guys get the best advantage. It's like being able to hit twice. Okay, so the French did seven, four to seven, but let's see how the saves work. The morale. There are no modifiers that I can see that apply to the morale, so each have to roll four or higher. The French will re-roll all these hit dice on them to see if they can save any of them at four or higher. And the good news is, they do. They roll a two sixes and three fours. It turns out to only two casualties on them. Let's see how the Dowager does. And they did, oh, they did three saves. So, only one hit is done to them. So, one hit, two hits. Let's do the casualties. Two on them, one on them. Sorry, I got it the other way around. Okay. So, now that that's done, two on the French. The French did one. Uh, the 
French did one, the British did two. Let me see here. Any modifiers to that? Heavies? Nope. Stop and slow down a bit. Go back to this last thing. It was four and four, ca they each suffered three casualties, right? They each had a support, correct? But there was something we forgot about those guys. Going back, got to jump back to the other combat. They are heavy cavalry, one dice, three. They get rolled. A two, they add one more to their hit. There are five. A five to a four. This battle turned into a French victory. So that means that that means that those guys there have to make a break test after all. So, one, two, three. Let me see. Break test. Disorder, excessive casualty, suffered. So, ah, they each rolled a break test. We already did the break test anyways, but that's okay. Anyways, here, back to this one. It was two on the French, one on the Dutch. So they each have a, two on the French, one on the Dutch. They each have a supporting unit um, with them. Okay, per access. Okay, they each have a supporting carrot. Hold the high ground per flank. That's it. So it turns into a Dutch victory. French have to roll a break test. No excess casualties, though. Disordered suffering. So there's no negatives to their attack. Still, they roll a three, and a three destroys them. Man. So, and they lost their leader because he was attached to their unit. Okay. So the French have taken casualties. And here, 26, 28. This makes, I think it is the Beauchamp. This makes the Beauchamp Regiment a broken regiment. They've lost two regiments. They only have one guy left, the Balm, and they can't stick around. So, so they've lost their general. There they are. They're going to have to make a disordered retreat, I think, in the next command phase.